Welcome back to the channel everybody and in this episode I have what I carry in my 2019 TRD Tacoma Pro. So guys let's get started. This is a kit that I personally built for my truck. It's what I'll carry on a daily basis. So if I'm going to do anything more adventure riding or if I'm going to plan a trip out somewhere I might carry more items but this is just the basic items that I carry. One good thing about the Toyota Tacoma, it offers a lot of areas that you could do storage and compartments that will house these without me losing them or them rocking around in the cab. So it's been a really good source of, uh, of container and containment. So again, this stuff here might vary depending on what you require and what adventures you're going on. So we're going to go on with what I would say is what you should carry on as a basic kit. For anybody, even if you're not adventure riding, you're just driving your vehicle around in the city, you should have a little bit of stuff just to make yourself a little bit more comfortable. I kind of bring it up a little bit. I do a lot of driving, especially in northern Alberta and some off-road trails, and I do plan on doing some off-roading. So some of these recovery gear is especially important to carry uh, just because you are in an area where you might not uh, be able to uh, get out as easy. So just a few little items. Uh, they range in from importance from fire extinguishers to first aid kits to just uh, flat tires and keeping your hands clean without getting dirty. So let's go in, we'll dive in here, I'll show you what they are in detail and why I carry it. And we'll continue on to the truck, we'll load this thing up and I'll show you how well everything fits and it's something you might consider for your next adventure ride when you're out there on the roads. Stay tuned. CB equipment operational. Walkie talkies. Operational. Cordless phone on separate lines. Operational. Stupid looking hat. Op. <laughs> unnecessary elf. Really unnecessary. Okay guys, let's start off real simple. We're going to go in and just look at the block heater cords. Now Toyota TRD Pro in Canada, they come with a standard block heater cord that is uh, equipped with the vehicle. And I'm going to show you a little bit of this thing here. Actually, it's pretty neat. They should have this a lot in Canada or in colder climates. This here is a plug. I thought, again, I thought maybe it's for a winch plug or anything, but no, that's the block heater. So living in colder climates, you really would need to plug your car in once it gets to below, I'd say, in the 20s and 30s. It does help keep the engine coolant, uh, the engine oil warm, or the coolant warm, actually, in the block. So plugging it in overnight will allow the, that to keep warm. So Toyota's done a great job on it. So this one here is a standard procedure. So I'm just going to leave it in the truck. Uh, I was thinking about taking it out for the, like my winter package and just leaving it in the house. But I've decided against it. I'm going to put everything in the truck, keep it under one roof and it should be good. I won't lose it or I won't forget about it. Because it is a different plug in than just having a universal plug. I'm also going to keep... Uh, spare plug. Now this is an extension cord for cold weather so it won't be brittle or break once it gets in the minus 30s and 40s. Uh, so again this one here is your general plug but if I need to have a little bit longer depending on where the plug is located I'm going to use this Noma outdoor extension cord rated for very cold weather. The blue ones are also good but even in extreme extreme cold they can still get brittle as well. So those are the block heaters. This is more of a winter package part of it. Coming here, this is what everybody should have in their vehicles, a set of uh, gloves. Now these are high vis, you can get anything that will protect your hands. But basically if you're going to be uh, driving or operating any vehicle and you get a flat tire, which can happen anywhere, you don't want to get your hands dirty. So again, touching a, a tire that's muddy or one that just has, you know, um, tire shine even will get your hands greasy. A good set of gloves will help. And then especially if the weather's bad, cold or whatnot, taking a, taking a tire and changing it to minus 10 or minus 20 is not comfortable. So having an extra set of gloves will be great. I usually keep two, but for now I'm just going to keep a set of gloves in there. I might throw a set of mechanics gloves if I have to do any roadside uh, emergencies and uh, repairs. Also is a high-vis jacket, especially if you're on a highway or something like that and you need to uh, put something on. Now this one's not the greatest and I'll tell you why because if depending on the clothes that you have on you have to maybe put it on and off. If you have one of those just those vest jackets they're easy to put on even with a heavier uh, larger coat or in the winter. So I might change this up but keeping yourself high vis at all times will help in those areas where you might be off a, a dark path 
or something like that. So you always want to keep yourself totally visible as much as possible. Keep the four-way flashers on and maybe have some other safety cones. I don't. I just make myself aware of my situations. And I wear this so people do know that I'm on the side of the road. So again, that's uh, the other thing that I'll pack. And it's easy to pack away. Uh, let me see. So I got this knife. It's just a knife to cut things down or whatever. If you're going to have something where it's going to be you know, uh, electrical tape, or you're going to do something underneath there, or you got to get something cut loose if you're off-roading and you need to take something that shouldn't be where it is. This is the best thing to have. Moving on, I'm going to have, let me see, tire gauge. Now this is going to go in the glove box, and the reason why it's going to go in the glove box, occasionally I might have to drive on an ice road. So this one's a Motocraft one, it's uh, from Canadian Tire, which is a very popular uh, retail store here that carries a lot of different types of, um, you know, automotive related gear, outdoor gear, and just uh, general usage. But, so it's what, it's what I like about it, it's got this thing here. Um, now this thing here, for those that people don't know, I'll try to do a zoom in on it. This one here can break your window. If you're, let's say, trapped and your vehicle breaks through the ice and you lose electrical and you need to get out, well, you can wait till your vehicle fills up with water to let the pressure be equalized to open the door or an emergency you can do this. And it also comes with some other types of uh, multi-tools. I haven't really gotten that out and I should actually. But uh, yeah, so the multi-tools cut the seat belts, and of course a very important, hopefully this is all you use, is a tire gauge. Checking your tires regularly, keeping them inflated, will help make sure that you're safe on the road, and the vehicle maintains control in most situations, and obviously aids in fuel conservation and fuel efficiency, you know, making you save some extra bucks, nothing wrong with that. Uh, now this hitch pin is not a spare one for the receiver because the truck did come with its own receiver. This goes in with my toe strap and I will show you why I use that style and why those two to go together. Let's get this little package out. Now this one here is an, again another one by uh, Motormaster. Uh, again can find this at Canadian Tire. It's very easy. This one here is a little booster pack. So not only can it charge your batteries, but it also can boost your vehicle. So it's very handy to have. And let's say your cell phone's low on power and you need an extra little bit of juice. It's good for camping and everything like that as well. So I find it a handy little pack. The only thing is you gotta recharge it once in a while and actually use it, you know. It probably has a good three to five year shelf life, maybe a little bit less, depending on how you use it. Another little thing that I carry is a little light. It's basically, uh, can sit on the side of the road and it can help you change your tire at night. So it's a good light to use, but also if you need to use it for a signal, there's uh, two uh, beams, high beam, low beam, and then we got a red flashing light. So if you're disabled on the side of the road and need a signal, this one can actually help out and it folds down and it's nice and flat and compact. That's another one. This one here that I'm gonna carry is a multi-purpose crank radio. Awesome. Yes, it is awesome. This one here is just your oh, battery's low. So it's just showing me that the battery's a little bit low. I can actually charge it because it does have batteries or I can hand crank it. Uh, this one here is a good emergency radio. It does come with a little solar panel, but this one's you can get on these ones on Amazon or anything. It's called the Running Snail and I picked it in uh, nice green. That looks pretty cool. But this radio here will help you. It's got weather station and let's say there's a blackout even at home where you're having something where there's a disaster happening and you know all the power is gone. Well you can use this or even if you're camping or going somewhere off the beaten path. So running snail is going to be uh, an emergency uh, kit and again it'll fit nicely in the truck. So going on that we're going to get to the booster cables. Now the booster cables are in conjunction with the Motormaster one. This one here is a good one for to go. But let's say you are really stuck and there's somebody that needs a boost and the battery is really dead and you have to let it charge for a while. Well this is a backup booster cables and so it's just a backup to a backup. These ones are pretty heavy rated. They're 16 feet 4 gauge which is pretty thick and so they'll be able to start a diesel car or anything of that nature. 
talk about first aid kits. Not only should you be practicing your first aid or getting a course into first aid, especially if you have an active lifestyle, I do carry a first aid kit. Now this one is just a basic one, so it's not gonna do anything too major. I'll just kind of peek inside. It's got your uh, typical triangular bandages, compresses, nitrile gloves. Uh, inspect it once in a while. I haven't really gone through this one just to see what I've got, but it can do most stuff. And it also comes with this handy little first aid book and you can check it out to see what, uh, see how to use it. But, you know, putting a first aid kit is just your first step in there. Getting first aid training is another great valuable skill that you can get, especially, like I said, I'll repeat it again, if you're an outdoors type of person, uh, you do run into situations all the time. This one's good for Alberta Regulation Level 2. That's more of a occupational health and safety. Nothing to do with the personal uh, touch. Going on, just a regular air compressor. Again, nothing. another one from our Canadian Tire Store. It's just a regular compressor if I need to add air in my dirt bike, my uh, truck, or assist any other people. This one's not going to be that great, but it'll help you in a pinch. And second from last, fire extinguisher. It's very important, again, to help aid maybe in some roadside assistance or for you and your vehicles. So always carry a fire extinguisher. Again, make sure it's in good shape and we can, uh, you know, stay on the road. The next one we're going to go to, the last one, is the recovery strap. Now, because I'm going off-roading a lot, this might be needed, even though I got a Toyota Tacoma Pro. It's uh, excellent off-roading. You can meet somebody in distress or you can get in distress. And having a tow strap, because I don't have a winch, is very valuable. I'm going to do a little bit of a four-wheel drive demonstration why I use this. This basically keeps the tow strap securely in its place in the receiver of the truck. So it's good for on the rear. That's all that roll is. So let's go put it all in and we'll see how nicely it tucks away. And yeah, then wrap up the video and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, how to use all this. But what's the role of it? And maybe we'll do some role playing and uh, stuff like that to make it look good. So guys, let's hang on and we'll go back to the truck and load her up. Hey guys, one thing I did forget is a Smitty built uh, bumper. It's an original tri uh, fold uh, shovel and it's uh, carbon reinforced and it's got some easy grips, double edged sword. I'm going to do, like I said, an off road um, review of all this stuff, but basically, this was the other package that I forgot to kind of let you know. Comes in a nice little handy carrying case that's pretty nice and compact, so it stays nice and clean. You can put any information, your patch on the back there. You really have one or not I'm gonna keep it in the box just to uh, I have a lot more room than actually I need so this truck here could really outfit so what you uh, want go and, and see the some. finished product because I'll put this as a last finishing touch and so we got this and this one here I thought I had more room but I was kind of trying to save it a little bit so I'm gonna put that back in there so that can go there, the cord can go there, uh, yeah, let's just keep it like that, and then the rest of the stuff here can go up there like that. So guys, that's uh, basically the package, so the behind the passenger uh, compartment in the back seat here, you got my sho uh, Smitty Belt shovel, my air compressor, tow strap, jumper cables, the pin to keep the strap and the hitch, a knife and an extra a block order a block whew, block uh, block heater cord that's what i want to say back here is what the truck came with with the jacking instructions and all the other components to put it in but on this side i'm keeping it just real simple just keep the block heater cord in there i can add stuff in here as i need to and as the adventures progress so back here On this side, I'm gonna keep it very simple. Open this seat, very nice and organized. This is very important to me. It is gonna be the a flashlight or the, the mounting light with the safety light, battery pack, gloves, and the high-vis jacket or vest. And then back here, nice and compact, is the first aid kit and the fire extinguisher. 
and it fits just perfect. I could maybe add another set of gloves in there or maybe another, a little bit of uh, other safety items as I build this kit up and as it progresses. So the only thing left that I do have in here will be the glove box. And the glove box is gonna house the radio. It's gonna house the tire gauge and that should be it. So I'm just gonna go in and organize that a little bit more and then she's all set. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video anyway, and we'll kind of catch you on the next episode. We'll do a little wrap up and then we'll uh, jump in front of the camera and we will talk a little bit more about what I have planned. Well guys, thanks a lot for sleeve. tuning in today. Hope you found this interactive. There are gonna be a couple other little things I'm gonna throw in like garbage bags and maybe some tape or whatnot. But uh, overall, that's basically the general packaging that I'm gonna put on my truck that stays in there for all my travels. Again, I'll probably build something a little bit more high tech when I do a bit more adventure driving as that comes along. So guys, put in the comments section what you carry on, what you liked about the video, maybe some other suggestions, and we'll go from there, we'll have a nice discussion. So stay tuned for other episodes on how to use that stuff. I'll do a fire extinguisher review and how to use one, and I'm also gonna do about a toe strap, how to put one on properly and use it so it's safe work practices. So it's gonna be a lot to know, a lot to dive into. I think you'll find it very fun and informative. And again, can't wait to hook up with you guys and maybe do some rides with my subscribers. So guys, thanks for joining Cordetti Motorsports today, and I'll talk to you in a future episode. You guys, stay loose for now. Oh,